Welcome to this series of videos on the statistical package R. I'm John Lee, a tutor from ACTED, the actuarial education company, and in this brief video I'll be showing you how to use R to evaluate basic functions that you might find on your calculator. Now recall from the previous video that R is a command-based programming language. We have to type in commands at the prompt in the R console, and then we press enter to execute those commands. We can also enter commands using a script, as we'll see in a later video. In the previous video we covered common arithmetic operators. Here we're going to look at functions for simple mathematical operations such as logs and trig functions, the kind of functions that you'll find on a scientific calculator. Now there are literally hundreds of functions included in the standard R program that cover mathematical operations, statistical analysis, graphing and many other purposes. You could also get extra functions for specific features, such as time series analysis, Twitter data mining, or prettier graphics, by downloading something called packages. We'll cover how to do this in a later video. Now all functions in R operate on the following principle. You have the name of the function, followed by brackets, and inside the brackets you put the arguments, i.e. the values that you're going to put into the function, and then specify any additional options. We separate the arguments and options with commas. If we omit any of the options, then R will choose the default setting. Note that both brackets are needed even if there are no arguments or options. For example, in an earlier video, we introduced the command for quitting R, which is quit open bracket close bracket, or Q open bracket close bracket. It has no arguments or options, but it's still got both brackets. Let's start with the log function. Function name is unsurprisingly log. The argument is the value that we wish to find the log of. Let's do log of 1000. And there's only one option for the log function, which is the base of the log. We're going to choose a base of 10. And we can see that the answer is 3, as 10 cubed is 1000. Again, note the index number at the beginning of the output line, which, as we mentioned in the previous video, gives the index number of the first answer on that output line. Also, recall from a previous video that R ignores spaces, whereas spaces make life a bit easier for us humans to read the commands. Now let's do this function again, and rather than retyping it in, I'm going to use the cursor up arrow. We can use abbreviations for the argument names, as long as the abbreviations are unique. So instead of writing base, we could write B equals, and we get exactly the same answer. Or, being quite risky for an actuary, we could omit the option names altogether. Just make sure you've got all the values in the brackets in the correct order. Now what happens if we omit the option altogether? In which case, it uses the default option setting, which is a base of E, i.e. it gives us the natural log. Let's just remind ourselves of some unusual outputs that we might get. Log of 0 minus inf, which stands for minus infinity. Log of minus 5 gives us nan, which stands for not a number, as the log function is undefined for negative numbers. Finally, recall that R is case sensitive. If I were to use, for example, a capital letter, R politely tells us that it has no idea what we're talking about. So remembering the names of functions and its arguments and options is extremely important, and we'll look at some ways to do that in the next video. Let's now look at some other functions for simple mathematical operations. The exponential function is exp. The argument is the value you want to find the exponential of. It doesn't have any options. So for example, the exponential of minus 5. Now we covered how to do powers in a previous video, so we could already calculate the square root by doing a power of a half. Or we can use the dedicated square root function, sqrt, to get the same answer. Let's take a look at trigonometric functions. As you'd expect, these are going to be given by sine, cosine and tangent. And they only have one argument, which is obviously the value that you're inputting. So if we do sine of 30, we can see that the function assumes that the input is in radians and not degrees. Now we can enter pi as obviously pi. So let's do sine of pi over 6, the equivalent of 30 degrees. And we get the answer we expect, which is 0.5. Similarly, cosine and tangent. 
However, tan of pi over 2 should be undefined. Question is, why is it not? Well, the reason for that is that the value stored for pi is just a little bit limited. There are ways of getting more accurate values, but we won't cover those here. Similarly, sine of pi should be 0, but we can see it's hindered by the rounded value of pi. The inverse trig functions arc sine, arc cosine and arc tangent are just given by a sine, a cos and a tan. For example, the arc cosine of 1 is 0. Hyperbolic functions are defined in a similar way. For example, the hyperbolic sine and the inverse hyperbolic cosine. OK, let's clear the screen and do our last set of functions. We're going to look at factorials and combinations, which will obviously be useful for our statistical work. Factorials are given by the command factorial, and it just has one argument, which is the value we wish to find the factorial of. Using the up arrow, let's do that again, but this time with 0, which gives us what we'd expect. Now the choose function is what we use for combinations. n choose k is obtained by choose open bracket n comma k. So this has two arguments and no options. So for example, to do 10 choose 3, we'd do choose 10 3. What happens if we only enter one of the arguments? R helpfully tells us that we've missed an argument and there's no default, which is a polite way of telling us we've made a mess of things. Before we end this video, let's just remind ourselves what happens if we accidentally forget to close the bracket. You can see we get the plus prompt, which is R's way of telling us that we've not finished. Either we can type in the remaining part, the close bracket, or we can hit the escape key to cancel the calculation. In our next video, we'll look at how to get help on functions.